This video shows how to use Volatility's new TrueCrypt plugins to defeat disk encryption on suspect computers running 64-bit Windows 8 and Server 2012. The suspect accesses a USB stick with a KeyPass database and two TrueCrypt file containers. He unlocks the KeyPass database. He begins to mount the first TrueCrypt volume, fruitpunch.jpg. The TrueCrypt passphrase is retrieved from KeyPass. Note that the user explicitly enables password caching. The second volume, notes.txt is then mounted in the same way. However, this time, password caching is not enabled. As you can see, both volumes contain exploit files and payloads, including the Zeus source code. The suspect opens PowerShell and uses WinSCP to transfer several executable files to a remote FTP server. The FTP password is also retrieved from the KeyPass database and placed into the clipboard. At this time, we suspend the virtual machine to simulate capturing the suspect computer's memory. Now, we insert the seized USB stick into our analysis machine and prepare to analyze the memory sample with volatility. Our first plugin is TrueCrypt Passphrase which extracts the cached credentials quickly, but only for the first volume that the suspect mounted. On the other hand, TrueCrypt Master finds the master keys of all mounted volumes and also shows the container file, algorithm, and mode. Let's try decrypting the fruit punch file with the passphrase we extracted. This should be a straightforward process. Once it's mounted, we can explore the contents. It appears to contain what we expected, so we'll close it for now and begin attacking the notes.txt file. This is a 100 megabyte file encrypted with Serpent, to which we now have the master key. We will need to create a new TrueCrypt volume with the same size and algorithm as the suspects, but with a passphrase of our choosing. C123 and complete the setup. We now have a template file with a TrueCrypt header to which we know the password. We write this header onto the suspect's file so that when TrueCrypt asks, we can supply a valid password. We must then trick TrueCrypt into loading the master keys we extracted from the memory dump rather than from our template's header. This is done by moving the master key file into the etc TrueCrypt directory. Our patched version of TrueCrypt will check that location and use it if found. We prepare to mount notes.txt. Keep in mind that volatility finds master keys regardless of the algorithm because it uses a direct structured approach rather than one based on patterns. If TrueCrypt can find the keys, so can we. As you can see, accessing this volume took a few extra steps, but it was relatively easy. The next command locates files on TrueCrypt volumes. The suspect didn't open any of these files during his session, they were read into memory simply as a result of mounting the volume. This quick script creates a comma-separated list of file object offsets, which we then pass to the dump files plugin.
Remember, TrueCrypt and other disk encryption software is transparent to the operating system. Thus, the OS caches files on encrypted volumes in the same way it does non-encrypted volumes. The output directory contains various clear text executable files. Let's investigate the suspect's other activity with Volatility's Consoles plugin. This recovers command history and screen contents of command shells, including PowerShell and Perl in Python prompts. Finally, the clipboard plugin shows the suspect's FTP password. Together with the console's output, you now have the server address, username, and password.